as long as my camera battery lasts. And we are going to be doing a drafting of the Princess Petticoat and hopefully a dressing jacket. This is a 1928 pattern. There's not a lot of direction at all, actually. There are no, there's no direction for anything this old. So this is just a generalized, okay, here we go. So we're gonna have one fourth of a bust plus one half of an inch, five inches in the back, which would make four and a half inches in the front, and then you have a strap in the middle of that. You have 13 inches down, you have 22 and a half inches of gathers for hip gathers, because that just makes everyone look good. And I really should have said that more sarcastically than I did. Um, hip gathers, wow, that's, that is a thing. So I want hypothetically about 34 inches down, uh, and then it says for the hip waistline area that it wants half an inch more than above. So I'm gonna do 10 inches and then two and a half inches. That will result, and of course this is one fourth of everything, so that will most definitely go over my hips. So let's start drafting. I'm going to start with a line at the bottom of my page that is perfectly perpendicular. And I'm double checking on both sides. And I'm not measuring this bottom line, I am just doing a straight line all the way across. I know that I want 34 inches up, so let's go ahead and get that 34 inches. and that will be the top. Then I want to know where my 10 inches out is. And that's six inches. Why am I doing it this way? Don't do it the hard way, sweetheart. Doing it the hard way. Have no idea why. Okay, there's my 10 inches. And then I'm going to pull a perpendicular line up from that bottom part and just do a crazy huge line all the way up. I know that from the math I had, I want 21 inches. Oh, I almost did that perfect. I'm going to do that because I bet that's awful in the volume. Okay, so 34 inches. 10 inches out, 21 inches up, 21 inches, and then it's there. I want two and a half inches in, and then <clears throat> we want nine inches, nine and a half inches out from the top. Now we're gonna add curving. Oh good, my dishes are done. Oh, I love that my uh, appliances sing to me. All right, nine and a half inches out. And then I'm gonna put in there because I know that I'm going to need to, I want to know where my five inch mark is. Taking it slow, measuring once. Well, measure twice, but you know. You know how that works. And then four and a half inches out, double checking that I got my math right and that everything's happy and that is at the four and a half inch mark. Then 13 inches from that. Hmm. No. Oh. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. 10 inches out, that's not right. Okay, the, not this mark. Let's go, go straight up now. Finish out that, no, because that's nine and a half. Wait, 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 wait. Thirteen inches down, let's drop that line.
probably should put on my glasses. That helps a lot. It was such a surprise to me when I needed reading glasses. It was so strange. And that's half an inch. That looks bright. Okay, so dropping that down, confirming that that is in fact 13 inches down, which it is not actually. So we're gonna do it to here. And then we want to go two and a half inches for hip gathers. I will never not be delighted by that. Okay, so 2.5, and then 0.5 and a half all the way. This is five inches, this is 4.5 inches, this is 13 inches down, double checking now. And there's a phone. Five inches, four and a half inches, 13 inches, two and a half inches, and now all the way down. There. So ignore that line. Not a problem. I have those all the time. All right. And then we're going to remeasure that because that seems here. Okay, that's decent. All right, so that's the basic block of a princess petticoat. Let me give myself a little extra room. There's no shaping down here. These are just hip gathers. So it's 13 inches up. So the only thing that we have to mess with now is up here. So. I'm not seeing the dip in the front. Four inches of prints. Huh. Well, let's just uh, start here. It says that it wants an inch and a half up. So let's make a dot right there. Then it wants, and I'm going to do a perfect, I'm not going to flip anything around. It wants one inch down, so that's one inch there. One and a half inches in that. What seems to be the Hmm. Curved. I'm not entirely sure where they're going with this, so we're just gonna we're gonna copy everything first. Let's copy it and call it good from there. So down, up. It also seems to want a four-inch thing. <clears throat> Okay, so this is one inch, this is four inches, and it also says lace there. Huh. And then, why is that such a, there's no dip there. All right, let's take a look at this. All right. See, that's the back. And that's the front, and it is a huge thing. So that would tell, but that would be around, okay, and that's the hip. So that's your center. So the front is supposed to have a V, and I'm not seeing that V here. So I'm going to say that this is either an option that they're not showing, which is could be very typical. But, okay, so that's what we're going to make next. You can see all of the pretty lace work. I think this will be great for the use of a lot of my lace. Okay, so that's just weird, and I'm not sure about that. This makes, 
sense because that's underneath the armpit. That's the back and that's the front. Huh. And that looks really, really straight. So I'm not sure where that's going. I know that I've made this before, so therefore I can actually have a perfect straight T here and it will actually, well, I've seen actually a lot of the 1920s slips like that. So I'm not sure. I don't think that this applies here. I just don't. I think that this actually is just the straight square. This tells me that I should do as I please and trust that I know what I'm making. <laughs> okay. For the sake of argument, I'm going to draw everything in. Okay, so there's the back. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe that's not... See, this chart has a back and this has a front, and if... These 1920s, early 1920s patterns are really light on explanation. So this is very much a, eh, maybe this. I'm going to eyeball this curve. I know that the curve, you need a little bit of a 90 degree angle wherever you're on the fold because otherwise you end up with this crazy ink and uh, it's hard to do a fold over for a seam, uh, to, to, to hide your seam edges. And that's, this is supposed to be a simple and quick concept, not some sort of major labor thing. So I've, I've done a tiny little in and I'm, then I'm going to do the curve from there, not from the fold. And I'm eyeballing where I'm doing the curve. As a reminder, this is just a French curve. I mean, that's what it is. This comes in just a little bit more on this curve than over here, and that should be noted. Okay, up. And I'm not sure why we are doing this, but I'm going to put this line in here just because it's there. And this says curved, and I know that we have a curved point here. So you put your, I hope that's on camera, curved arrow on there, on the dot. that is the point of the strap. Because these are the hip gathers over here, this will be the armpit. And now I need to determine what I'm doing for the front and the back. The back is supposed to come higher than the front. This is probably for something that has a little bit more of a depth to it. It bothers me that it doesn't look like the picture on the page. It bothers me deeply. Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do both of those. All right, this is the back line and this is the front. I am deeply tempted to do the back on both sides just simply because this seems really, really, really deep considering where everything is at and I'm not sure that it's going to fit well or that I'm going to appreciate it much. 
I also know that because the back does not overlap any of the front lines there, if I cut out two back pieces and go, this is great, I can go from there and that's not a problem. But if I don't like the back in the front, I can cut that part off and immediately go to the front. So I'm going to be conservative here and cut this pattern out uh, the way the Haslam pattern says to do the back and front. Okay, let's cut some stuff out. I need scissors. my patterns don't have a seam allowance at this point and at this point it would be very hard made for me to work with a pattern that did have a seam allowance but for the sake of well it should always be put on there because if anyone ever use else use this why anyone else would be using my patterns I don't know but I'm putting it on there that's just good practice no seam allowance 1928 princess Petticoat. I love the the, uh, the the princess part, and then it's going to be page 21, and there is no figure. It is what it is. Okay. This is not my favorite paper that I'm working with at all, but I can see through it, which is very, very nice. It's just really thin tissue paper but it was also very, very cheap. Now, I'm not going to make a strap because I think that I have, I'm going to use some sort of lace, probably not this one, but I have another one that's not at all stretchy, so I'm thinking at most I'll back it with a stabilized ribbon or something, but I'm not going to cut out more. I am not making a small little strap of chiffon silk. I think that that would be so fiddly, I would be ready to commit murder afterwards. Okay, so no, sh no shoulder strap, and that pattern is actually done. This is an insanely simple thing. The point of this is just to be a, pe um, a slip, even though they call it a petticoat, um, it's a slip, and be able to Hmm, what am I trying to say here? The point of this is that it's a luxurious material with a lot of lace. Not that it's a crazy big sewing project. Okay, 
So that's number one. Number two is the dressing jacket. Let's take a look at this. Okay, the dressing jacket. We have a broad. We drop down a certain amount of inches. This is going to be around the waist because you can see that if not around the waist, almost a low hip concept that fits. Got a nice thing. That'll be nice lace edging. I don't need to worry about any of that because this is just a crisscross type of thing. And there's your centerfold for your back part. I'm thinking that this is not going to be crazy difficult. So let's do some stuff. Okay. I'm thinking this is wide enough. If it's not, I have the big one over here. All right. Six and a half inches. This is going to be on the fold. So the fold is going to be over there for the center back, but then I also have that little book over in the front, so I'm thinking that I'm not going to draft this on any specific side. Hmm. I'm going to draft this first. Okay. This is a four and a half up. Let's do a basic line. That is a rectangle. So let's draw a rectangle. As I did before, I'm dropping an entire line across the entire page. And now I want four and a half inches. out I'm going so I'm just going to do four and a half inches all the way across. Then it wants, I don't know if they're going for tucks or lace, I don't care. I'm doing lace because I have a lot of lace. Four and a half inches. So four and a half, ooh, don't rip the paper. Four and a half inches. And the hips from here over is one four hips plus one half. I'm gonna go with 38 on this one, 38.5. talking 10 inches, 10.125. We're going to go for 10 inches. We're fine. And there's our 10 inches. And then it drops down by two. That's ten. Then it wants two extra inches for the overlap because this is a crisscross in the front. And that's my two inches out. And that's ten inches the other way. So that's going to be a twelve inches. That should do just fine. 
on earth is rustling? Oh. Okay. This would be the bottom part of the dressing jacket. I would put a lace trim at the top of it and then there's going to be a lace trim that goes across this way and a lace trim that goes across this way. And if I was completely out of shot for that. Oh, I was totally out of shot for that. Here, give me a second. Let me bring this up. Oh, I'm so sorry. I hate camera movement too. I promise. It's not my favorite thing. Okay. Okay, what I just drew out will be the base part of everything. It will overlap. I will have a lace decorative trim at the top part of the base of this. And then for the crisscross, there will be a lace decorative border on both sides. I'm going for frou-frou and to use the amazing lace that I have. There's no sense in not using it. So that's this. And now I need to do the, the back and then the front. I need to draw these two separately. I could probably fold it though. I could fold that. Okay, I'm going to draw the back of this. With the understanding that I'm going to put in that and that. Okay, let's go back down. Okay, so sorry. Look away if you if camera motion makes you ill. I'll let you know when the camera's no longer moving. Okay, the camera's no longer moving. Okay, I'm gonna cut this part out. Okay, but I'm going to also label it. Okay, dressing gown, dressing jacket. Dressing jacket, no seam. Allowance. Uh, this can be on the fold. And then I'm going to put a little arrow at the top of this going to attach lace crisscross here. And then I'm doing this little wavy line and then go lace here. Okay. Seems like the silliest square pattern of my life, but let's just do it. Last thing I want to do is try to measure this on slippery silk. I'm not looking forward to cutting out the chiffon. You know that's going to be a bear. Dressing jacket, ooh, wait, wait, 1928, uh, page 21. It's 10 o'clock, I'm doing good. All right, let's bring this down. And then... I need to stare and I need to think. All right, on the neckline, it wants it to be pushed a little towards the shoulders by half an inch. on both the front and the back. 
This is supposed to be a dressing jacket, so this should probably drape well. I'm not entirely sure. They don't specify how far out you want your sleeves, so that's up to you. They want the armpit area dropped by an inch and then one inch down, one inch, one and a half inches out from wherever your sloper says your armpit is. So boom, boom, and then out, drop 17 inches down, but out in an angle. What is that angle though? That's a good, that's, that's a really good question. And it doesn't really, if you're not careful, there will be gathers, maybe in the back. If there are, I will do a decorative thing. Uh, dead center in the back, right over the, right over the hips where that attaches, just in case that length, because there's no measurements at all for how far out I'm supposed to go on that. So I think what I'm going to do is take my original bodice sloper front and back, put this on here, and just use some general things because I know that my neck thing is fine. This is, my bodice sloper is good enough for this. Okay, let me grab that. This is the back. I actually like my neckline on that. How about Yeah, sure, let's just do it. Okay. Um I'm going to This will be the back drafting. I guess All right, first thing to do, trace everything so I can then change it. All right, and then I'm gonna lightly draw this in. I'm just gonna Follow everything. Okay, that's good enough. All right. Slide this to the side. And then find another ruler. Okay, here's the other ruler. I have got to get myself a new ruler. Um, give me these scissors. These are not my sewing scissors, I promise, okay? These are just generic scissors and I ended up using my um, rotary cut cutter and I keep catching this one spot which means that I'm taking my ruler apart. So I'm trying to, okay, maybe that'll help. There's no sharp, no sharp edges, we're good. Turn this pattern over, because that's not what we're working with. Bring this one back, because that is the one I'm working with. Okay. This is the center back. on fold. No seam allowance. 1928 dressing jacket back. Page 21. Okay. And this is Haslam Designs and you can find this at Mrs. Depew's uh, yeah, Mrs. Depew.com. She's lovely. She, she is preserving history, and I love that. Okay. And no, she didn't pay me to say that either. Okay. Uh, let's move. This gets ignored entirely, as does this. So now we're going to do something I've never done before. 
and also the reason why I said I don't think that my bodice sloper is going to be an issue on this one. Ooh, lower back is achy. I'm aware that this table is way too short for me to be working on. Deeply aware. Go to here. Now, that's the top. Let's just draw a beautiful line all the way out, like that. And then we're going to move half an inch in right here, which will then just eyeball this a little bit. Okay. I might get an eraser for this one. I wonder if my dog. Oh, I got this. I got it. I got it. This is why I like working in pencil. I can erase things and I love that. It doesn't show up well on camera, but in a lot of ways I really need accurate patterns for me because otherwise I'm making mistakes. All right, so that's now moved out half an inch. That is the back neckline, and I know for a fact that that fits me, so that's not a problem. And am I in camera? Ooh, okay, here, okay, done moving, okay. So that's my back neck moved over half an inch. We are now ignoring that entirely. And I'm going to measure from here to here. That's about 14 inches. So okay, everyone, close your eyes while I move the camera. I'll let you know when I'm done, because I know that's obnoxious as all else. Okay, I'm done moving the camera. All right, let's figure out how far. Am I in camera? Gosh, I can't even tell. All right. That little bone at the base of your neck, that's where you measure from, okay, for, for any on, anything on the neckline. And I think that my aesthetic likes, let's say 20 inches from the base of the neck, which would hypothetically be all the way to the fold. Okay, I'm gonna move the camera again. Okay, everyone, shield your eyes from moving. Gross camera movement, hate that. Okay, and then back down, and there, okay. You can look again. Okay, so, no, nice pencil. This would be the bone of my neck right there. So I'm going to take my ruler, line it up with the edge really well, line it up with the tip, and draw a line all the way out. This is to about 18 inches. I need about two more there. Should have used that paper. To draw this for a second. Two inches out more. So we'll deal with that in a little bit. And then let's go six and a half inches down like they want. And then let's before we before I go this direction, I now want to deal with the armpit dot. Now the armpit dot, as I said, okay, I'm gonna cut 
come back up here so that I can drop things perpendicular. Remember that you always want, like, think of all of this on a grid so that you're not just eyeballing a direction. So I'm now perpendicular off of this. I'm meeting my corner. I'm actually gonna move it up to an inch area. There we go. So one inch down. one inch drop, and then one and a half inches out, it says. So half an inch, one inch. This is on my armpit dot, and none of this has anything to do with anything. So that's one inch down, one and a half inches out, and I'm supposed to use the broad arrow, which is right there. And there's that dot, and there's this dot. Ooh, that fits. Okay, there's my line. Broad arrow, six inch sleeve, broad arrow, six inch sleeve, everything's lining up. Well, let's draw that. Okay, so there's the sleeve. So, Boom, 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 boom. Two more inches out. I'm almost thinking that I could uh, attach like a really wide lace. For example, give me a second. Because I've got a really wide lace here. I could do something like that all the way around. Now the big thing about the lace is that I need to make sure that it's not super itchy because I actually want this to be flouncy and pretty but also insanely comfortable. And soft, fluttery, very feminine. Okay. Hmm. It has a one inch. I wonder where that, where's that coming from? Her back. Let me think. Mm -hmm. All right, the no, 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 no. There really isn't any instruction on that. Let me show you. Oop, I'm getting down to 20% people. My battery on my phone is just low. All right, I have a one inch mark right here and then to there. There is no measurement, there is no guidance on that. Now I know that's two inches, but I also know that that's outside the normal sloper. So I can put my hand over that. I know that this is one, I know that this from here to here is 10 inches. I guess that's one inch out and up and that that's supposed to be 17 inches. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, all right, something I wanna look at. Let's put this back. This is my low hip. Do I match on this? Waste, waste. High hip, low hip. Okay. This is my low hip. So therefore, that's exactly where I want to All right, if that's my low hip, do I want to come up four and a half inches so that this is what's coming around it, and then that is up to here, which would actually be more like my high hip, 
that actually looks like, um, wait a minute, where's the 17 inch mark? Just out of curiosity. Ooh, okay, 17 inches. So I don't care, I don't know where the angle is on this yet, but it's gonna be somewhere around here. And 17 inches is to the bottom, that should be to the low hip. So, ish, we're gonna need to eyeball this. Okay. I have a feeling my camera is going to die at some point. So this is just a preview. Let me move the camera. You awesome people. Moving camera, moving camera, and this totally sucks. Oh, no, no. Still not safe. Nope, still not safe. Camera really wants to spin around. Okay, it's safe to look. <laughs> All right, my camera is about to die, so I have a feeling that it, this is where I should stop. I'm going to spend the rest of the day figuring this out cutting out some patterns, and I'm gonna try to start sewing this. I've got my serger already out. I need to transfer to from the brown thread to the white thread. That's always a pain in the butt. I hope it goes easily. And I'm hoping to have this episode up on Thursday. Happy sewing, everyone.